All right, guys, welcome to the other side of the intro here. What we're looking at is the upper level heights. Now, we're going to first look at this, and we're going to look at the actual snowfall, snowfall amounts, and a tornado and potential and much more. But this is a bowling ball trough. This is a trough in the atmosphere. This is cold height anomalies. Out ahead of it, we got some serious ridging, some warm air, some warm, moist air coming out of the Gulf of Mexico right under this arc, right where that divergence is. And that is setting up the uh, potential for a powerful storm system, as you see as we head towards Sunday here. This moves right out into the plains, and then as it moves to the east, it weakens a bit. But how does that look at the surface? A band of precipitation is going to start to form out in the plains here. A conveyor belt of moisture is going to run into the mountains, upper elevations, where it is actually colder off the surface. There is no rain to snow line here, but just off the surface, it's a little bit colder. So as this, we get towards Saturday afternoon here, around 4 p.m., this really gets going. Now the rain is lifted into Nebraska, Kansas. We're going to have to watch the Texas Panhandle, Oklahoma, and western Oklahoma for a potentially decent tornado threat. But as we uh, head towards Saturday afternoon, very heavy snow breaks out from north parts of New Mexico into Colorado, includes Denver, into southwest Wyoming. As we head towards Saturday afternoon and evening around 7 p.m., Look at this blow up right along this frontal boundary. This is the thing that we're going to have to watch here. Severe thunderstorm potential from Oklahoma, southern Kansas, Oklahoma, down into the Texas panhandle and just a little bit farther south. There could be thunderstorms all the way up to about southwest Nebraska, but I don't think they're going to be severe in the north half of Kansas. So just some thunderstorms and rain up in Nebraska, mostly rain north of that line. And then as you get towards the Wyoming, Nebraska panhandle into Colorado, extremely heavy snow Sunday night or Saturday night into Sunday morning is uh, what we could see here. As we head towards Sunday morning, continues to have heavy snow for western Nebraska, some light to moderate snow in Colorado and moderate snow to heavy snow out in Wyoming. And you can see this moisture. Here's your low pressure system right over there in south central Kansas. And that moisture just getting curled up and around it. You can see that temperature gradient. The rain to snow line now is out there. Pretty cold. But right here, right along this rain to snow line, that is where the heaviest snow is going to occur. Right where that moisture slams right into the cold air mass. That's where the heaviest snow is going to be. So Nebraska Panhandle Sunday afternoon. As we head towards around Sunday, this is Sunday morning around 9 a.m. or so, you can see uh, more thunderstorms. They uh, track eastward into uh, eastern Oklahoma and Arkansas and Kansas and even Missouri overnight. But the main severe weather threat will be to the east or the west, which we'll look at here in a second. Another chance of severe weather later on Sunday to the east. But this arc of moisture, look at that, just swirling right into Nebraska. It's going to set up a really heavy snow band on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon in southern South Dakota, northwest Nebraska and southeast Wyoming. As we head towards Around Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m., we'll look up north here in a second, but look at that arc. More thunderstorms developing. Missouri, Arkansas, and uh, down to Louisiana there. Some heavy rain, really heavy rain out ahead of this. Some areas could see a few inches of rain. We'll look at that in a second as well. And then we got some wraparound snow continues out here in Colorado, snowing for a long period of time with moderate to heavy snow. But what's happening here in Nebraska... This isn't going to be a huge winter storm for Nebraska because of all this dry air getting kicked in out in the dry slot here. So you can see that, that crazy comma head appearance. The heaviest snow will line up just near that comma head right there in Colorado and Wyoming. As we head towards Monday morning around 1 a.m., this storm is really going to shear out. Uh, later on in these storm cycles, they typically start off really strong. They get together. And then after a day or two, they start to shear out. The low pressure system fills up and uh, it, it kind of just dissolves. And that's kind of what's going on here. You can see it shear out. It spreads out a little bit more and there's just not as much uh, precipitation. But where there is lift, it can still be very strong. So there could be some very heavy snow in Iowa, not very long duration, but a quick heavy batch of snow and then uh, some severe weather or some thunderstorms and rain in the... Uh, central eastern half of the united states as we head towards monday afternoon this moves to the east there could be a bit of an ice threat as this is moving to the east across illinois indiana and even ohio 
not very long duration, but there could be a little bit of ice. We'll have to watch that. A little band of rain out here. But look at the low. It's just over here, and all your precip is way off to the east. So the low is losing strength. And all that lift is getting spread out, and uh, there's a little high right there. One thing we're going to have to watch is whether or not this will become a bigger storm for the East Coast. It's actually been trending downwards the past few runs, but it does give uh, parts of Virginia and West Virginia a mixed bag of precipitation from rain to snow. But it doesn't look like a classic snowstorm by any means, uh, as the main event usually is going to be back when the storm's developing and as it's maturing. Now, in terms of snowfall amounts, here's the NAM. The GFS is absolutely wild. I'll go over that in a second. The NAM is forecasting a good 6 to 10 inches in Iowa. This area down here where you see this blotched area, I would uh, say that's overdone. The areas where it's really kind of blotchy and that kind of that geometric look, usually the model's overdue. And it's having issues with the rain to snow line is what that is. So I would say it'd be more like this, north of that pink line, up in northeast Nebraska, northwest Iowa. And then as you go towards southeast South, De uh, southeast South Dakota into south or southwest South Dakota into southeast Wyoming into northwest Colorado and western Nebraska, that's where the heaviest snow is going to occur as much as one to three feet in some areas. Some areas, probably in southeast Wyoming, the way it's been looking, and that's what I mentioned on my previous video, it's going to be probably maxed out from the southwest corner of South Dakota into Wyoming and the Nebraska Panhandle. That's really where the biggest snowfall threat has been. One to three feet in that area, maybe some areas 20, 30 inches plus by the NAM here. A little bit a little farther south, this is what Colorado looks like. Right along that front range, you're talking 6 to 15 inches. So lots of snow out there. And uh, you'll notice the dry air that kicks in, that's going to keep the snowfall amounts very low for parts of south central Nebraska. And there's just not quite enough cold air in that area either. But look at the GFS here. The GFS, a little bit farther north with the snowfall in Iowa and Nebraska. But look where we go here in north central Colorado. I'm going to fast, I'm going to show you this real quick. Look at this, 90 inches by the GFS. That is incredible. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the GFS is way overdone for that area. I think it's going to be just a little bit farther to the north, probably southeast Wyoming, where the maximum snowfall is going to occur. But 90 inches, I don't know if I've ever seen that this far east. Sometimes I see it in like up in uh, Washington or uh, Montana, but this is pretty crazy. Uh, I would say the highest areas will clock in close to three feet. Maybe it may be an amount that gets closer to 40 inches or so up in uh, southeast Wyoming, but that is pretty incredible there by the GFS. Here's the European computer model. I think the Euro has a really good handle on this in terms of the track and snowfall amounts. So much of Iowa in that three to eight inch range, some areas maybe nine or 10 inches in northern Iowa. And then Nebraska, uh, 6 to 12 inches with the northern west part into Colorado, up into southeast Wyoming, southwest South Dakota, 1 to 3 feet. Denver, probably about 1 to 2 feet of snow within that region. It's going to vary quite a bit depending on how close you are to the mountains. We're going to turn our attention now to the severe weather. Then I'll show you what it looks like in the east coast. This is Saturday around 7 p.m. I think this is one of the best bet for severe weather is going to be. There's a frontal boundary here right on the Texas Panhandle, a good batch of moisture scooting in out of the Gulf. These are 60 dews, pretty moist, and a frontal boundary up there in Oklahoma. Your best bet for severe weather is going to be near the triple point here from about the Texas Panhandle up into the Oklahoma Panhandle into east or west portions of Oklahoma. There could be some thunderstorms north and south of that line, but that's where your best bet is going to be based off this surface map. And if you look at the instability, you know, we'll go to supercell composite. How about that? The chance for supercells to blow up in the Texas panhandle and anything above a one, the potential is there. And you can see that right along Texas here. Again, the best bet is going to be up here in the panhandle of Texas and uh, Oklahoma, where you have a five to eight supercell composite up there. So moderate, slight to moderate potential for some pretty nasty uh, weather, significant tornado parameter. Look at that, maxed out. There could be 
a couple of strong tornadoes here in the Texas panhandle into Oklahoma. So that, that's a little bit of a concern here. The SPC has a 10% hatched, which means, you know, a slight to moderate chance of tornadoes with a couple of strong ones possible. So the tornado parameter, all you need is one. We got about a three in some of those areas. All right, this is how it could look radar-wise around 3 or 4 p.m. That's when storms could break out in the Texas-Oklahoma panhandle. And this is uh, your higher uh, DBZ values, and you can see some pretty high DBZ values. This could be a, a decent little batch of thunderstorms that develops, but it really gets going right around here, where the supercell environment's really the best. is going to be right in the eastern half of the Texas panhandle. And look at that right there. You got some supercells developing right out there. And look at that right there. That is a classic look of a flying eagle type of supercell. And that, in that type of environment, the tornado potential exists, especially with those wind shear values. There's some significant tornado potential with a look like that. So we're going to have to really watch that closely. It's right in that environment. As we go towards Saturday around 6 p.m., you know, you get some storms to blow up. But this is the tornado threat is a lot lower for south of the panhandle where it's going to be more of a linear threat so when you get lines it's harder for uh tornadoes to develop because you don't get quite get that rotation but still some tornado threat potential up there for the texas oklahoma border around uh 7 p.m or 6 7 p.m and then that storm moves to the east overnight and uh you know as it does it's going to enter a cooler environment not as much instability and so it's going to be mostly a rain an isolated thunderstorm type of threat overnight so yeah that with that type of look it just doesn't quite look like a, a, a you know you'd get tornadoes or hail or or wind farther east than maybe central oklahoma and central texas so that moves east and then uh we're gonna have to watch uh the day on sunday as well some Isolated severe thunderstorms possible for parts of Oklahoma, or, uh, parts of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, but not quite as strong. Mostly an isolated hail and wind threat, maybe a weak tornado or two. But that's what the uh, actual radar looks like. In terms of SIPS analog, this is the analog. This is several different setups that look similar to this setup, and it's averaged together. How does that look? So, you know, these are past setups, and you can see... This is one or more severe weather reports, and you can see several setups that look similar to this have had, look at this, 70-80% uh, of the setups have had one or more severe weather report for western Oklahoma and the eastern Texas panhandle, and 50-60 uh, plus for much of Texas, northern Texas, and uh, the east half of Oklahoma, even some up there in Kansas have had at least one severe weather report. Now, tornado reports, at least one. Not as many. We're talking only about 20, 10 to 20% of setups. Look at that up there in southeast Nebraska. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, there's nothing that would support tornadoes up there at the moment. But uh, that area right along the Texas-Oklahoma panhandle, possible. And then uh, you know, maybe overnight you'll see an isolated wrap-up tornado along a line of thunderstorms in eastern Oklahoma. But I really think the best potential is going to be very early on, 4 to 7 p.m., out in the Oklahoma, Texas uh, region. Now, in terms of snowfall amounts, this is just for tomorrow, or the, uh, this actually just goes out through Sunday morning-ish, okay? This isn't including the whole event, but this is snowfall amounts with the past 15 analogs that look, look similar. And you can see in Colorado, uh, a lot of these events have had 8 to 12 inches. But again, that's only one day, so... I suspect you'd see another 8 to 12 inches or so, but there's some pretty good confidence in northern Colorado of 1 to 2 feet, and maybe even southeast Wyoming as much as 2 to 3 feet if you combine this analog data with the model data. So incredible snowfall amounts. Now, this area has seen 2 to 3 feet before, but there is that potential. We have to look at the GFS and some of these short-range models they do, some of them go over three uh, three feet, so 36 inches plus. There's going to be some interesting dynamics that occur right along the mountainous regions and the foothills that could enhance lift. And where that occurs, you know, you could see over three feet. So it's going to be a pretty uh, incredible event out there. It just stalls out there. If it didn't stall, 
Well, you'd be seeing a much bigger event for parts of Nebraska and northwest Kansas. But because it stalls, it essentially strengthens out there, then weakens, and then moves to the east and kind of gives the rest of the area leftover snow. Now we'll look at the east coast. And uh, we'll uh, fast forward this a little bit. You know, this is the GFS for the east coast. It doesn't have a whole lot of snow you know, even though it was showing it on the model, but one, maybe two inches for parts of uh, Pennsylvania and Virginia. And then uh, the ice threat, there was a little bit of an ice threat. You can see uh, some ice out there in parts of Virginia and uh, parts of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. There's some indications that there could be some mixing, maybe some ice, a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Even some areas with a half inch or more, I don't think that's, I think that's a little overdone, but maybe a tenth to a quarter of an inch in some of uh, uh, in some parts of uh, Virginia, West Virginia, and then also out in Indiana, northern uh, Illinois, and uh, western parts of Ohio. So, pretty dynamic system. But like I said, the main threat going to be in the Central Plains. Stay tuned for more updates, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below, and we'll see you soon.